I'm in the Homestead Garden, but I am installing a new beehive. It is a flow hive. Stay tuned. This is part one. Hello, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. I uh, decided to uh, install a beehive in the corner of my garden to maximize the pollination of the plants because the plants do need bees to be able to uh, fruit uh, for the most part. Uh, my mantra, uh, my statement has been, save the bees, save the world. Because uh, if the bees meet their demise, there's no, uh, there's other pollinators that will pollinate the plants for us. But bees primarily are the primary pollinators that we rely on and we can then get honey from. So if we want to continue getting honey, save the bees, save the world. So this is part one in a short series that I'm going to be doing on installing a beehive in my garden. I was blessed with a flow hive. What is a flow hive? Well, I'll explain that in more detail in a, uh, I think, part three. But right now I'm going to install the beehive and I'm going to introduce to the new viewers the anatomy of a beehive or the different parts of the beehive. So let's get started. Okay, for this project, I chose uh, the upper corner of my garden out of reach because I really didn't want to disturb the bees while I'm out here gardening. And I'm going to be putting in a drip irrigation system so they shouldn't be too disturbed by a lot of uh, sprinkler water because this portion of the garden will be, you know, by drip irrigation. I'll have it on a timer and I'm getting ready to move my plants out. So stay tuned for that episode when I do some homestead gardening but right here i've decided i've got this piece of board i need it it's uh it's a pressure treated board so it doesn't rot i put it here and the reason why i need it is because my ground slopes and what i did uh and i need a level i need to create a level area for the beehive so i went down to lowe's and i bought this all-purpose pan multi-purpose pan and it's called a small mixing tub and you buy it in the section where you find your uh, concrete mix like the quickcrete or the sackcrete and you can mix your concrete in it and uh, pour your concrete but i'm going to use this for a different purpose i already pre-leveled this area out so i have my level and then i put my tub in place and I set my level there and make sure, yeah, for the most part, it is level. Let's see. Uh, yes. And then it's level this way also. And the reason why I want to make it level is because the beehive should be uh, pretty much level. Also, the reason why I selected this tub is... I'm going to fill it with water. I'll explain that uh, in a little bit and why I'm putting water in. Okay, another product I purchased while I was down at Lowe's purchasing this tub is I went and picked up some uh, 8 by 8 by 16 inch cinder blocks. We're going to center those in there. The bottom ones, we're just going to center. I bought four of them. So we're going to center the bottom ones there. And the top ones we're going to just set on the so uh, on top of these, but we're going to turn them on their side. And uh, I again will explain to you the reason why I'm putting these blocks on their side. Now this is ready to fill with water, but I'm going to continue assembling the hive. To this base of block I pr uh, I purchased and set up. 
we're gonna add what do we call, this is the first part of the hive, the bottom board. The bottom board is nothing but three quarter inch plywood with a three quarter inch strip fastened in along the edges with an, uh, the front exposed. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this on the block. And this should already be level now. I want to add, unlike my apiary, Pine Meadows Hobby Farms apiary, the bee yard, those boxes are bigger. They contain, they contain 10 frames. This one is big enough to contain eight frames because the flow hive and the flow hive box is only an eight frame size. So when we get it all assembled, we'll show you how it assembles. The next feature I'm going to add is a brood chamber also known as a deep this is where all the work is going to be done right here this is where the queen lives in this brood chamber uh, she's going to be laying her eggs the worker bees are going to be raised from there from those little eggs and go out and forage for nectar and pollen and propolis pitch and they're going to bring it back and they're going to sort it out in uh, the way bees sort things out. So to, so to this one, I'm going to be adding three, only three frames. These frames are a plastic base or what they call a plastic foundation. And this is the frame with a plastic foundation and it's coated with a wax and it's got little hexagon shapes on them to um, inspire the bees to draw out comb in this size on these little frames. So we're going to go ahead and set those in here. We'll put one over here and we'll put three over here or two over here. So now I have room for five frames. We're going to leave that empty because on Saturday I have a nucleus of bees being delivered. That's a whole nother show. Stay tuned for that one and we're going to add a nucleus. So for this particular hive, I'm going to add another deep or brood chamber so the bees have enough room to expand. So I like to give my bees plenty of room to create brood so I have a strong healthy hive full of brood to be able to uh, survive the winter months. Now this winter I'll be making a special envelope for this so stay tuned for that episode. Let's fill this with frames. This particular one accommodates eight frames so these frames have these are brand new frames never been used so the bees will draw these out and make honeycomb in them they'll put up they'll put honey and pollen patties pollen cakes And then they will also place in uh, propolis on the edges of the honeycomb. Okay, eight. So we're going to move this over, center that in there, and put a little bit of space between the hives. You don't need to because these little ridges here are uh, already pre-spaced. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of space. I don't know why the board is, uh, or this box is spaced this way. I did purchase these from a local source. We had Shastina Millworks located in White City, Oregon. And Shastina merged with Man Lakes. And now we have a local supply house that we can go and get most of our beekeeping supplies. So for my beekeeping apiary, I just purchased two of these eight frame boxes, which is gonna satisfy me for accommodating this flow hive. So let's add the flow hive, but there's another feature we need to add to this beehive. That feature is a screen. 
that screen has wires that are designed close enough together to where a worker bee can pass through there, but the fat little queen bee can't fit her chubby little body through there. And uh, there's an important reason why you want a queen excluder on the top of your brood boxes. You, you want the queen to lay all the brood that she can, and then you can also uh, harvest brood and split and make queens. There's another video, a whole another section on that I'll be going into uh, by doing it this way. So let's go ahead and add the um, flow hive. This is a flow hive. It's specially ordered. Uh, my friend gave it to me, so I was blessed, and so that's why I'm putting this beehive together. The flow hive goes on top of the queen excluder. And the reason for the queen excluder on top of your brood chambers and below your honey supers, this is called a honey super. So the reason for the queen excluder is that queen is an egg laying machine. She works hard laying all the eggs she can. And if there's chambers up here that she wants to lay eggs in, she's gonna go up there and lay eggs in, unless you have a queen excluder, and that's what we put on this. If you're adding honey supers to, for the purpose of collecting honey for sale or for your own personal use, you do not want brood in your honey comb. That's why you need the Queen Excluder. They're relatively inexpensive. So let's go to the next part of the anatomy of a beehive. The next part of the beehive is the inner cover. The inner cover has a hole in it. That hole is there for a reason. And the inner cover is about 3 8 inches. Uh, and it also is cut to exact dimensions, the same size as the eight frame box. It goes right over the top of your brood chambers if you do not have honey supers on, or it goes directly over the top of your uh, honey super. Now this hole acts as ventilation space. Moisture in a beehive is catastrophic to a beehive. Catastrophic. You do not want moisture in the beehive. You want good airflow, air circulation coming through, and the girls, which are most, uh, you know, all the worker bees are girls, and the queen is a girl, they will uh, do their darndest to keep this ventilated and keep the temperature in here regulated for the purpose of maintaining that queen and also maintaining that brood, the baby bees as they evolve and hatch and come out and become worker bees. That's the sustainability of a beehive. What I also use these for is because I'm Pine Meadows Hobby Farm, a frugal homestead. I will also use this as a winter feeder board so this little hole the bees can come up through there and I'll lay in a dry sugar out here and the bees can come in and eat that dry sugar and then they have carbohydrates through the winter months and there's enough of a, a lip right here to be able to lay in dry sugar because when I add my top cover it creates just enough of a space for them to be able to come up, eat, and go back down in without having to go back outside when it's really too cold for them to fly. Not done yet. We've got to cap this off with a weather resistant cover. This is the cover. I've painted this uh, for with a, uh, a good uh, ceiling paint that was like a roofing material paint to be able to coat it and protect it so it'll last me for years. This is new. I just purchased it from Man Lakes. M-A-N-N -N Lakes. And so uh, the anatomy of the, the, the lid is pretty simple. 
the interior space is big enough to fit over the top of an eight frame box or a 10 frame box depends on what you've got this is approximately two inches deep and this plywood on top is approximately a 5 8 inch plywood it's nice and thick so it allows uh, both the boards and the plywood allow for a certain insulation value to protect those bees especially in the winter months so this finishes off the beehive just by placing over the top and you can opt to put a brick on it especially when you live in the prairie areas or wide open exposed areas when strong winds come along it could blow your uh, hive over uh, or if you're subjected to bear I, I you know I have yet to get a bear in here, but I have electric wire fencing with a solar powered charging fence that I'm putting up around all my bee yards. So it protects them from bear from getting in and decimating your beehives. The bear aren't after honey. What the bear are after is the grub, the pupa. That's the protein, uh, not so much the honey as opposed to what they show you in winning the poop anyway we're not done with this yet nope there's still a couple more pieces to a uh, a hive for a beekeeper to be uh, consciously protective of his hive now you have the entrance that's exposed and to reduce the amount of predators that get into the entrance you have what you call a hive reducer. The hive reducer is notched to allow bees to go in and out. And you can opt, depend on wearing, uh, depending on where you live, you can opt for a hive redu you know, entrance reducer with a small gap or a larger gap. Or you can remove the hive reducer completely uh, when full honey or full nectar flow is going. Uh, so it allows the bees free access to and from. So what the hive reducer does is it allows the guard bees to protect the hive from predators and yeah, from robbing. Now there's another feature that you add to this. Uh, I cut mine a little bit short because I want to accommodate an entrance feeder. Now this is an entrance feeder. I purchased this at a local source. Uh, this is what it looks like, the label on the bottom of it. But it's just a simple mason jar with little tiny holes. I'm not sure the size of the holes in it, but they're small enough to not allow the liquid to flow through and just drip freely through. The bees actually have to come up with their little tongues, proboscis, whatever you call them, and draw the um, solution out of the jar and be able to take it into the uh, the hive since this is an entrance feeder we stock this full of uh, sugar water typically is what i put in there and then we just push it in here and then the bees can come in here go underneath and draw from the nectar and i keep uh, track of the level and how much and how quickly they're drawing from it because that is important to a beekeeper also and is how much are they drawing from it and how quickly. I did provide an extra gap in here to accommodate the entrance feeder. Now I'm not done yet. Uh, there's still a couple of more features I need to add to this. And for those of you who have been following me for quite some time, know of my self-proclamation that I admit that I am eccentric. Yep. That being said, I went to Dollar Tree today and I went and got some yard art. I removed the little bell and the little chain and I'm going to screw this to the front of it. That way it gives the bees, if you have multiple hives the same color, you need something that's distinctive for that hive so the bees can identify that hive that is their home. So that's where this idea comes from. And since my hives are different colors over in my other bee yard, I don't need to worry about that. But 
I'm eccentric. I'm going to add this to the hive. I'm going to go ahead and add it right here because I can. And this is the upper brood chamber. Oh, isn't that cute? And the screws are short enough where they do not penetrate the wood. I really didn't want them penetrating the wood. Not done yet. Nope. I couldn't resist. I went down <laughs> when I was at Dollar Tree. I found these little stickers. Yep, got to put these on. Let's see how they go. On. Oh, they probably won't stay, but there you go. Okay, now it fits my personal standards. There's one last thing I need to do. And this is why I put those one cinder blocks on their side. I got a tie down strap. This is going to be important. I thought that I lived in a safe area because we live tucked in a little valley, kind of protected from the wind. I thought wrong. Last summer, we had a wind from hell. Folks, I'm not kidding. We had a wind straight out of Hades. It blew so hard down in the valley below us that it caused power lines to whip and contact with each other. Yeah, you know what happens when you get a uh, uh, a, a, a hot line with a cold line and, and you know it it sparks those sparks started fires and the winds blew the fires like crazy and it burnt 3,000 homes it was the wind from hell I went out the next morning to do my chores and one of my beehives, one of my best beehives, was toppled over and on the side. We got hit with that major wind. So I'm not taking any chances. So this, folks, is why I put the cinder block on the side. So I could strap down my um, beehives and not worry about them toppling over in another high wind because man this planet is going through some changes people are getting weird countries are getting bizarre but Hopefully this time my beehives won't fall. Yeah, I can't even tip it over. It's stable. Uh, we'll be able to harvest honey out of this. What this does, filled with water, it keeps ants and pretty much mice out of the honey um, supers so you don't have the pests like the hive beetles and stuff. So this is a deterrent. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm going to explain in part two uh, the flow hive. Now, a lot of you know what the flow hive is, but some of you don't. And this flow hive is a wonderful invention, so stay tuned for part two. There's a lot of information that is uh, out there, not necessarily on the flow hive, but on other ramifications yeah stay tuned for that and i'll also go into details on why i chose a nucleus of bees instead of a package of bees yeah there's a reason found that out you learn the hard way like i said stay tuned to the next videos uh, i've got part two we're going to talk about the flow hive part three we're going to introduce the nuke 
and that will be coming up on this Saturday. And part four, we're going to be looking at the operation of the whole beehive and giving you some more detailed information on that. And part five will be down the road at the end of the season, we'll actually harvest honey from this. Stay tuned for that. Uh, to stay tuned is simply there's a couple things you can do simply you have to subscribe then click that bell icon that's the alert button which alerts you to the new videos as I upload them and then uh, it'll alert you to whatever uh, new things I'm doing here on the homestead and you can follow our adventures and then once you do that watch Give us a thumbs up if you like the show. Click that thumbs up button. That really helps out our channel. Google likes it. You know, YouTube people, the executives at YouTube really like the interaction that you guys have with us. The comments are another interaction they love. And the more interaction I get, the you know, even if it's just a thumbs up or a like, you know, uh, that really helps out the channel. It just shows them that our channel is getting viewed. It's popular. People are enjoying it. And so if you could do that for me, great. Another thing you could do for me is if you just comment. Yeah, compliment. I, I enjoy compliments. Who doesn't? Seriously, folks, who doesn't enjoy a compliment? Uh, if you have a tip, please let me know. Uh, trick? Yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm watching, I'm listening, I'm taking to heart what you guys are saying. So, uh, be safe and always be kind. Please, people, be kind. We'll see you in the next episode. It's on something different, not bees. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay? We'll see you later. Bye-bye.